yeah, we'll just uh, get into the meeting and uh, try to keep it as professional as we can. Um, if, if that's how we go, right. So uh, I'll officially start this meeting. Good evening and welcome to our first Martin Borough Community Board meeting uh, by video conference. Uh, we are recording this meeting due to the COVID restrictions as it is not possible for the Martin Borough Community Board to conduct this meeting for uh, its members and the public to be physically present. Uh, all participating members count for the purpose of the meeting quorum in accordance with Clause 25B and Schedule 7 of the Local Government Act 2002. Uh, this meeting will be recorded and will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel uh, tomorrow via a link on the Council's website. A summary of the meeting will also be made available on the Council's website shortly following the meeting in accordance with Clause 47A of the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act. Uh, 1987. Uh, so before we get into the official uh, sort of things, um, I think we will, um, and it's probably already happened with other council meetings, but um, if we could just mute uh, our, uh, devices when we're not talking, um, if you would like to participate, uh, could you please put your hand up so that uh, Steph, Suzanne or myself can see you. Um, and uh, we will um, acknowledge you and, uh, and then you can unmute uh, your device so you can speak. Has uh, anyone got any questions at this stage? Great, thanks. Um, so topic uh, one, uh, extraordinary on topic one on the agenda, extraordinary business. Is there any extraordinary business that needs to be added to this agenda this evening, folks? No extraordinary business? Okay, thank you. Uh, now we'll move on to apologies. Um, I'd like to uh, put an apology for uh, the chair of the Martin Borough Community Board, Mel Maynard, as she is unable to attend tonight. Uh, are there any other apologies? Uh, I could put an apology in, I think, for um, Harry Wilson, even though he's not a, a member of the committee, but we were ably uh, replaced by you and Stitt, so um, we're probably better off. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I would move that apologies from uh, CEO uh, Harry Wilson and an apology from uh, Chair of the Martin Borough Community Board, Mel Maynard, be accepted. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Pip Maynard, uh, for seconding uh, that motion. I'm about to call a verbal vote, so can members please unmute uh, your devices. All those in favour of accepting the apologies, please say aye. 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 Uh, all those against, please say no. Thank you. This uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, topic three on the agenda, conflicts of interest. Does anyone have any conflicts of interest to declare with regards to the items on tonight's agenda? No conflicts of interest. Thank you. Um, now we'll uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, now we'll carry on to topic four: acknowledgements and tributes. Does anyone have any acknowledgements or tributes they would like to make for this meeting, Councillor Maynard? Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, I was actually. Um, I'd like to make this um, on behalf of the chair. Um, 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 the chair, chair Mel Maynard, um, had just asked me to um, bring this up under the acknowledgements um, because uh, she would like to acknowledge and thank the people of the entire ward for their community spirit and care for one another during the COVID-19 pandemic and its lockdown. 
from our caring and connected rural communities to all those supporting each other in town. You are all amazing. A huge thank you to all our essential workers who put themselves outside their own bubbles to continue to help our wider community. Thank you, thank you. Kia mihi koutou. Thanks for that, Councillor Hip. Um, well, well said by the Chair. Um, uh, Nathan, do you have an acknowledgement? I sound like you're Aiden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't have known the difference. But... Um, I would like to thank uh, Why Waste, Why Rapper, and I'm not sure if I'll get this right, but um, Pip will tell me. Um, Nati Kahu Nunu. Um, for distributing um, food parcels to local families and uh, people in need over the lockdown. Um, and I'd like to also um, thank the local businesses and the essential workers that uh, kept our community going over the um, COVID. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Nate. Nate. Um, I think, uh, yes, um, our community has certainly uh, has certainly pulled together. While a lot of people um, have uh, have not had work um, and uh, and are struggling, there are certainly uh, groups of people within the community who are pulling together to, to help and uh, and provide assistance when needed. Uh, Mayor Alex, if I could possibly uh, just chair. Um, and put a tribute in for Sandra Prince. I did this during the council meeting, but this is the community board where she was. Uh, she passed away uh, um, last month. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, just a tribute to her and the work she did within the Marlborough community, especially in tourism. Thank you. Thanks for that, Mayor Alex. Um, right. Uh, any other Tributes, acknowledgements. Okay. Uh, now, public participation. Uh, I am not aware of any public participation uh, this evening. Um, and uh, so, Steph, do we then move on to? Uh, we we have no requirement for actions from public participation. Is that right, Steph? Yes, that's right. So there's no public participants who have requested to speak tonight. So you can move on to item seven, the community board okay. minutes. Right. Thanks, Steph, for your input. Um, uh, so agenda 7.1. The community board minutes on pages one to seven of uh, the agenda. Uh, does anybody have any corrections to make from uh, the meeting dating the 27th of uh, February? No corrections, no additions needed. All good. Um, do I have a mover that the minutes of the Martinborough Community Board meeting held on the 27th of February 2020? Oh, sorry, Councillor Maynard, I missed. No, I'm moving it. You said, do oh. I have a mover for that? And I was like, I, I'm moving it. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. I was running through my spiel. And I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I thought I had missed something. Thanks. No, not no. at all. Sorry. Um, sorry, Pip. So thank you, Councillor uh, Pip Maynard, for moving uh, that they are true and correct. Um, do I have a seconder for this motion, please? Thank you, uh, Community Board Member Nathan Fenwick, uh, for se seconding that. I'm about to call a verbal vote. Uh, so members, can you please unmute your devices? All those in favour, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Uh, all those against, please say no. Uh, the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, so, agenda item uh, eight is uh, the chief executive and the staff report. Um, so, Alex, um, in the agenda here, uh, 8.1, we've got the Payne Farm Estate. Um, I'm oh, sorry. I'll make mistake, I've referred back to the minutes. Um, so under that, um, sorry, Steph. I was just going to say it should be item 8.1 is the income and expenditure yeah. report. Okay. Yeah, 8.1. That's on pages 8 to 14 of the agenda. Right. Good plan. So, does anybody have any questions or clarification uh, of uh, the income and expenditure report? Uh, at this time? Do I have a mover to receive the income and expenditure uh, statements for the 1st of July 2019 to the 31st of March 2020? Thank you, Councillor uh, Colenso, uh, for moving that. Uh, do I have a seconder for receiving uh, the income and expenditure report? Thank you, Nathan. Uh, I'm about to call a verbal vote, so can members please unmute themselves? All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All those against, please say no. Uh, the motion is carried. Um, we'll now move on to uh, item 8.2, which is the application uh, for financial assistance in pages 15 uh, to 16 of the agenda. And I think these uh, matters carry over from our previous uh, community board and uh, meeting in February. Do I have someone who will move to receive uh, the financial assistance report? Thanks, uh, Nathan Fenwick, for moving to receive that. And a seconder, uh, Councillor Pitmain, thank you for seconding that. I'm about to call a verbal vote, so can you please unmute your devices? All those in favour, please say aye to receive the report. Aye. Aye. And all those against, please say no. Uh, this motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, so this evening, um, we have uh, these two applications have come back to us for reconsideration as they were previously deferred at our last uh, community board meeting. Uh, we'll go through them uh, again in order to uh, just to refresh our memories. The first application uh, was from the South Wairapa Neighbourhood Support uh, Group, and we deferred that application on our last meeting as we sought further clarification uh, regarding the coordinator's role and uh, the service that they provide. Uh, the community support group, South Warrior Community, sorry, Neighbourhood Support Group, has since advised uh, that Rachel Clark has stepped in to the coordinator role and that there has been some discussion about establishing a service agreement with the South Warrior District Council for neighbourhood support across the whole district. And this requires a proposal that 
uh, neighbourhood support will progress as soon as possible. Uh, with that in mind, um, what are your thoughts of uh, the application for funding of, uh, of $200 grant to the neighbourhood support group of the South Horapa? Can we have some discussion on that, please? Councillor Maynard. Um, uh, look, I think I, I think that um, um, especially over you know connecting communities, um, I think they have <laughs> certainly have a role to play um, uh, here. And also, I I do note that um, they're also uh, they've they've made sure they're seeking it from the other two community boards as well. Um, and so, I mean, I'm more than happy to move that this uh, this be accepted. Thank you. Because Thank they, you, they have been doing things within our community. Um, so, yeah. I've, in, any other, uh, anyone else might like, would like to comment? Councillor Colenzo. Thank you, Aidan. Um, in the comments where they asked had they applied to the community board for funding before, and because I wasn't at the last meeting, um, would anybody be able to fill me in on the fact that they got a $400 grant last year, um, but they've only spent approximately $80 or $90 of that? Um, do we know what the, um, whether they've returned the balance or do they still have that? What accountabilities come through for that? Mm. It's a good question, uh, Pam. Um, Would Suzanne or Steph know anything? I was just going to say, sorry, Pam, I'm not sure off the top of my head. It would be something that I'd need to go back and check on. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Alex? Yeah, I mean, I, I, Pam, if, if I could mention that, it looks like the direct costs were there, but I don't know if that takes into account any labour costs, which is their major expense in that in that area, so, um, or, or whether or not we fund that. So I, know, I know they certainly have, um, there's quite a labour component in that. Just a comment. Right. Okay, so uh, Councillor Maynard has moved um, to uh, approve the grant. Uh, do I, do we have a grant for the flag? This is a grant for a flag. I just want that to be really clear. This uh, is a promotional grant flag. Something else that they're actually doing that they'd normally come through council. This is actually something right. that, they're, that that they're putting together. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Pip. Um, do I have a seconder uh, for this motion? Uh, Nathan Fenwick uh, seconds uh, the motion. Um, is there any more discussion before uh, I call a vote? Okay, I'm about to call a verbal vote. Can, uh, can members please unmute the devices? All those in favour say aye. 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 All those against, please say no. Uh, so the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, so the second application we've been, that, which was deferred, um, is from the Martin Borough Netball Club. Um, we deferred, uh, or the community board deferred this application, uh, pending an investigation as to whether uh, this fits into the Payne Estate um, Trust Income Distribution Policy. Um, so that request was sent to officers. The officer's advice has come back to community board to say that uh, the Payne Farm uh, Income Distribution Policy doesn't um, fit this application as uh, the distribution policy is intended to fund capital equipment and facilities. Councillor Maynard. Um, yeah, there was also a question back from the chair 
um, in another email, um, I'm pretty sure we will see seed in it, um, just asking if, if uniforms not considered equipment, probably the main staple of equipment for um, that, you know, like could that just be clarified again that that, that that wouldn't fit as equipment and she got no response. So if we could have some some kind of idea from from the council, that would be great. Hi, Pip. Sorry, Karen was um, going to come back on that. Um, so what she said, she's asked me to pass it on to Matt since she couldn't be here is that the relevant part of the High Court specification is providing, equipping and maintaining sports facilities in a children's program. She said uniforms may, at a push, be seen as equipment, um, but they are not sports facilities that fund, that fund facilities that the fund can be used to provide, equip or maintain. Um, the purpose of the fund goes to parks, facilities, etc., that can be um, really used by the community rather than just for individuals. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the response to that. Sorry that it's come late. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Steph, for that clarification. Um, so, uh, thoughts, anyone? Councillor uh, Colenzo, you've got um, your hand up. Yep. Thank you, Aidan. Um, my thought following that would be that um, the club has approximately three or six thousand in, in their account um, that they fund the uniforms and reapply for equipment, sports bags, um, um, basketballs, whatever they need that way that we could perhaps fund in that regard, whereas that's capital stuff that the, the club would keep um, mm. rather than rather than the uniform. So if they swap their, their internal mechanisms around and 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 do it that way then um that might be an option of doing it but you've got some ideas as well then pam I'm, I'm just thinking um you know one of the things was was we were looking at it to see if the pain estate could do it although the pain estate can't we do still have funding don't we as we the community board to yep. still be able to put towards it mm. um so i'm not quite sure whether or not you know um but it, that's the other thing that would that there is the, the grant funding there. How, um, I'm on the wrong side here at the moment. Let me just have a look at what the so I'm just going back into the uh income and expenditure. Um, I think they were wanting that they're wanting $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $
askings of money. I think Pam's idea of taking it out of the, which was set up in the first place for the pain estate is a great idea. Because in the future, I mean, they're gonna ask for more money. So it just takes it out. It just takes, it clarifies the fact that, yeah, we will give them the money. Um, um, but I'm just, just trying to think how we can make it easier every time they ask for the money for uniforms, that's all. So I'm, um, okay, um, okay. I'll, I'll take, hear, hear what you've all said. I'm just wondering, so they'll put an application for 1,350. I'm wondering, can we split that in half? And what are your thoughts on providing a grant out of the Martinborough Community Board grant fund for half of that now? And then, uh, and then we go with uh, Councillor Colenso's suggestion and, and, and uh, say to them that under the Payne Estate uh, distribution policy, we can fund uh, equipment or, or facilities and capital equipment and invite them to, um, to come back to us uh, with an application for the balance of that application uh, for, for equipment as opposed to uniform. So therefore they're getting some, uh, you know, Sorry, some funding now. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, can, does anyone have the, their actual paperwork? Was the 1350 how much it was going to cost just for uniforms? Was that the full price? I, I, the, uh, sorry, it's just not in the current Stella, so I'm just trying to find the previous, but I'm just having a bit of difficulty. It, um, yeah, I think it was, but just going back, Pam. No, no, I'm just wondering, because if it is, maybe what we could do is, is if we're going to look at it, we could say that, that yep, $700 can be put towards, put towards that, and then that way we could then go from... I mean, you know, and, and then and then we could help with their equipment side if they reapply, because we could uh, we could perhaps do that from the pain estate, which will free up additional funding for for the uniform. Yeah, um, it's totally it's totally for the for the uniform. It's nine hundred and fifty for the uniform tops and four hundred and fifty for their shorts. So it is, it's for 30, 30 of each, and it is just purely uniform, this application, which unfortunately falls outside Pain Estate um, distribution fund oh. guidelines. Mm -hmm. So which, uh, as, this, as this application stands at the moment, it, it, can, only, it can only be approved or declined um, by a community board fund. And and how many um, and Pam, how much did you say they still had in there? It's three thousand, isn't it? Uh, uh, six thousand. Three to six. Okay. So um, your balance on balance on hand is six thousand seven hundred and sixty four dollars fifty two. Yeah, and a lot of that's going to be for yeah. Okay. Um, so they. they Bought balls and equipment and stuff like that. You can see that they've um, used some of their existing funds or grant money from other people to to buy actual equipment and um, so. Um, and the run run short here. Um, yeah. Well, that, yeah. I, I mean, we could go the nine hundred and fifty for their for their for their shirts or uh, you know I, I I because to me I think we've got to. Come, come up with a way that they, you know, um, that they can still feel like a team. And I mean, if you're, you know, exactly like how Nathan said, I'd, I'd, I'd hate, it, it's enough to stop someone from playing sport if they don't have the right clothes and they don't look like the rest of the team. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and especially the young ones, um, which is why it's quite important. So, I mean, uh, to me, uh, may, maybe we could go 950 and that covers all the, all the tops. Hmm. And they uh, they fund the hundred. I, I don't know how one. Hmm. I'd i move that we fund uh, out of, out of the Martinborough Community Board Grant Fund. We fund nine hundred and fifty for the uniform tops, um, and then uh, have a covering letter to go with them. So that uh, this is out of the Community Board funds, as opposed to paying estate, and the paying estate funds are available to fund um, equipment, equipment moving forward. 
yeah. and invite them in the following season that if they require uh, any funding for capital equipment that can be, uh, they can make application to paint a state. Um, well, we'll take community board and then we, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Yep. So I'll move that. Can I have a seconder? Michael. Thank you, Michael. I'll second that. Seconding that. Yeah. Any any comments, Alex? Sorry, my mute button. Uh, no, no, no comments at all. Um, yeah, I okay. think that's a way a good decision. Thanks. Uh, so, all members, um, going to uh, put that to a motion to the vote or the motion to the vote. Uh, all in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes, all against, please say no. Uh, that motion is carried. Thanks very much, folks. <coughs> Um, so I just sorry I just have to go back I've just read a note um, Steph can uh, you uh, jump back in Steph please thanks I'm just reading the note uh, there may be an amendment for a lesser amount or a subject to further information do I need to reframe that resolution I think how you said it is that? right because you have included the new amount in the resolution already. So I've just changed that to nine fifty for you. Okay, so we're all squared away then. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now, topic uh, eight point three: the community funding arrangements report, which is on pages. Uh, 17 to 23 of the agenda. Uh, do I have a mover to receive report, please? Uh, thank you, Nathan. Um, and a seconder for the report. Councillor Maynard seconds the report. Thank you. What pages were they on? Uh, pages 17 to 23, Michael. Okay. I'm about to uh, put that to a motion. Can uh, all those in favour please say aye? Aye. 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 Uh, all those against please say no. The motion is carried. Um... So I've got a note here addressed to uh, Harry. Uh, however, you and do, have you got any knowledge on this uh, community funding arrangement? Um, um, I, I do have an understanding that um, this is the partnership agreement that basically uh, says that you continue to fund the Mass Association on an ongoing basis for this amount. And this is the agreement that, that frames that up rather than the Mass Association coming back to the community boards every year. Great. So the duration of the uh, MOU is the triennium. So the for the the three years until right. So twenty twenty two. Is that correct? That, yeah, it does that. It's, um... Right. Any other questions at all? Anyone? Right. Um, Aidan, the only thing I could add to that is that um, we've, um, through the community board, we've been supporting the Mass Rafterama Raft for um, as long as I've been around in the community board, and it's such a great thing for the for the, the children that take part. I think it's fabulous, and I think it's great that we're doing something with all community boards so that this is this is going to be secure funding for them. Yeah, and I and I second that. <laughs> and and if, um, Mr. Chair, uh, that what this does is it stops them from having to do three submissions every year to every uh, every community board. So it's nine mm -hmm. submissions over a three-year period. So that the intent of this is to streamline for them. We know we're going to fund them. 
we'll fund them next year, the next year after. It just makes it easier for everyone. Yes. That would be worth a worthwhile step for, for some of these other organisations as well to get them into that uh, and into that um, stream of uh, applications as well, I'd, I'd imagine. Alex? Uh, very much so. I think we discussed that today in the uh, uh, Finance Audit and Risk Committee regarding um, uh, funding, uh, long-term funding as well. So, no, it's definitely a way we want to go. Good stuff. Uh, Nathan, you got what? Yeah. Um, do we know if it's going to happen this year due to COVID? Um, possibly not, but this, this, once we have this in place, um, it could just go through for the following year, unless it was the end of the triennium. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, what time, what time of year is it held? Um, good question, is it? If no, I may, Adam, I think it's usually, Suzanne might be able to confirm, but I think it's usually around September, August, September. Right. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, in, in light of that, I, I think it's still crucial that that we go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and 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 whether COVID is still impacting us or not, I'd imagine that the organisers will, will will have uh, put their thinking caps on and come up with some uh, some new way of of uh, of okay. carrying out the event, whether it's digi digitally or some other way. Um, so that uh, there can still be involvement in, uh, in, for the children. Mayor Alex. Yeah, I, the, uh, it, it occurs every August uh, in Masterton. I, I'm pretty sure it, I'm, it would be likely to go ahead given that schools are back in anyway with some distance and I can't see why it wouldn't occur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. If, uh, okay, there appears to be no further questions. Do I have uh, someone who will move to approve the funding partnership agreement uh, between uh, the Maitlenborough Community Board and the Waikato Maths uh, Association? Thank you, Councillor uh, Maynard. Uh, and a seconder for that motion, Councillor Colenso. Thank you. Um, all in favour, please unmute your devices. Uh, all in favour, please say aye. 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 Uh, all against, please say no. Thank you, that motion is carried. Uh, now, item uh, on the agenda 8.4, uh, the Community Board Terms of Reference, which is on page 24 to 39. Uh, do I have someone who can move uh, to receive that report, please? Uh, Councillor uh, Maynard, and can I have a person to second uh, receiving that report? Uh, Nathan, thank you. Uh, I'll put to a motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 All those against, please say aye. Sorry, are you right there, Councillor Maynard? Uh, that motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we have been asked to, re to consider the revisions made to the terms of reference. Uh, Ewan, is there anything uh, you would like to add to that report uh, for the members? Not at this time. I don't know if um, either uh, Alex or, or Steph want to to um, add anything? Yeah, I mean, I can speak, speak to this. So it's really just a bit of a tweaking of the terms of reference. Uh, two ones to note for you. One is the fact that it's, uh, the pain farm is currently referred to as the pain farm trust. And so we're adjusting that because it's not a trust. Uh, so we just, yeah, that's a, a, a clarity. The other one is removing uh, civic awards um, from the terms of reference until 
the actual process and uh, the process to go through for those uh, is clarified, in which case it'll be coming back as an amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look down the bottom, you'll see the track changes, which indicate to you what is being changed in the terms of the reference that you've already agreed to. It's a bit of housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when, when this originally came through, it was um, uh, the, um, it, it was brought up. There was a good amount of discussion that was taken with it, and these were the changes that were requested by Martinborough Community Board and also by Greytown Community Board. Also raised uh, a couple of things. So this is what now taking that into consideration, what it looks like, and um, the things that were raised at our previous meeting have now been done. So that's really when, when like, like me, Alex says, it's more, more just that housekeeping side. Councillor Colenso. Um, Aidan, um, under membership, I'm sorry, I'm not, it's um, point nine in the, in the terms of reference. Mm -hmm. You've got the four ward councillors and two, um, two, uh, Four ward elected members, and then you've got the two councillors. Um, two of the community boards have student um, representatives on that, and I'd like to see that um, the wording in there is the student um, membership appointed in an advocacy role with an, with non voting rights included in there. So. People can have a student that there or not there. Yeah. So I'd like that wording added if that's possible, please. Uh, could I say, uh, would it be all right to say youth rather than student? I'm just thinking that possibly yeah. if we get someone who's, who's like 16 or, you know, that, that's showing a keen interest um, that may not be at school anymore. Is that all right? Um, Councillor Clenso, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think that that is a much better word than student. So a youth representative. Yeah. So do you want that wording again? Was then you've got that I've, wording. Yeah. So so sorry. Could I speak? It's just um, this is the the last community board in a chain of three, and the document has already been round to the community boards. This is the second time. So if we add extra wording, we can't actually um, put it, recommend that it's adoption to council without going to the community boards to check to see whether we can add that extra wording. I think what you've said is a really good point, Pam, but I'm wondering if we can actually recommend that council um, adopt the, the terms of reference subject to approval from the community boards to add that extra wording and then we've got it across the line except for that extra wording. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good plan, Suzanne. And I think it's some, yeah, I think that both are good points, uh, Pam and, 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 and Pip. Um, we have certainly talked uh, as a community board about having a student or youth representative uh, at, the, at our meetings at the end of last year. Uh, we just haven't uh, progressed that yet. Uh, but it's certainly something I'd like to see occur on the community board, and I think that's a good point to be uh, uh, to be raised and to be um, amended. Um, so, uh, does anyone else have any other issues that I'd like, like to raise about um, about the terms of reference? So I'll just call back Suzanne. So Suzanne, do we just um, uh, call for a vote uh, to make that recommendation of the adoption of the terms of reference subject to yep, that's an alteration? Right. Just, yes, subject to the alteration. Um, and we just need to specify it. Um, yep, subject to... Uh, the community, the Greytown Community Board and Featherston Community Board um, approving in retrospect 
the addition of, um, and then Pam might have to specify the exact sentence. So the, um, so a youth, youth appointed in an advocacy role with non-voting rights. Oh, right. Thanks. Great. I just got that down on my sheet. Um, Aidan, can you add in? It should it be youth member, shouldn't it? Okay. Yeah, appointed. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Um, do I have a mover to recommend to council the adoption of the community board terms of reference subject to the Featherston community board and the Greytown community board approving in retrospect uh, the addition of a youth member appointed in an advocacy role uh, with non-voting rights? Do I have someone to move that? Councillor Colenso, thanks. And a seconder. Nathan, thank you for seconding that. Um, all in favour, please aye. say aye. 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 All those against, please say no. Uh, the motion is carried. Thank you. This is a good point. Uh, now we'll move on to... Um, uh 11.1 which is the chairperson's uh report which is on page 40 and um so chairperson uh chair mel maynard um unable to make it tonight uh has sent her apologies but uh her chairperson's report is essentially um the draft submission of uh, the annual plan, uh, which has been uh, reviewed and discussed uh, by the Martin Borough Community Board. Um, is any member of the board, uh, would they like to make any recommendations for changes uh, to the submission before it is approved and finalised? Has anyone got any points to raise? Councillor uh, Pitt Maynard. Um, so there was one just uh, with regards to Karen um, when it came to the pain farm, which um, I, I believe was uh, topic number eight. Um, and she just said about the, um, if the line, da, 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 did, has everyone read that, what she sent through this afternoon? So that was an email. Yeah, um, it, was, it was an email. The, is that Sorry, the $35,000 35, thing? Yeah, no, but she she was she was saying that that's um um pretty pretty much every, everything else like it's where it's already reached, and they said that the they agree with the view for um, up to a hundred k. Um, uh, but it was with regards regards to the requirement for estimates and receipts to come through the Martinborough Community Board. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that the um, neither the pain farm policy or the procuring goods and services policy requires it, um, and a council resolution uh, would uh, amend the policies outside of the proper process. So, um, but it is coming up for a review, so it could be something that could be looked in the re review later on, rather than rather than putting it in the annual plan now. Yeah, um, if, if, if I may, just just to clarify, it's some. Um... Uh, the, the, uh, submitting this as part of the annual plan isn't the, the way to, to change those policies. Yeah. Um, as as uh, Councillor Maynard has just said, um, the, the pain farm policy and also the procurement policy is up for review this year. And, and that would be the time to, to provide that sort of feedback to those policy reviews. Yeah, so, so all think, I'm saying is that I, if, that, if that one sentence comes out, um, um, just, just the estimates for work... Uh, um, coming through for approval. If we take that out, but maybe, you know, but, but hold on to it as something with regards to the pain farm that we can raise when the policy comes up to be reviewed. 
but it just if it goes into the annual plan, it's not not it, it can't go through the annual plan because it has to go through the policy review first. So, okay. yep, that, that's correct. So, so if it's in there, it could hold up the community board's um, annual plan <laughs> submission. So, because it's not going through the proper process. So, well, could it hold up the work being done? No, the work's already being 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 done and um, at the moment so it's it's not so much that it's just that it's actually uh, not not a process that's been put into place um, and it has to go through the the policy first to be able to see if it can be so so at the moment because that policy review hasn't hasn't come up before the annual plan it, it can't be a process that's gone through. I mean, it's good that it's been raised because then that way, Karen, and you know, it's on their radar as well that it is a concern for the Martin Borough Community Board moving forward. So, is, is the recommendation that we remove that sentence uh, there that says all estimates for work to be done and receipts for work completed must come through the Martin Borough Community yeah, Board approval? approval before being asked to council for release of the funds. Yeah. So we remove that. Yeah. Here we go. We've got some wording. Okay. To prove. Great. So that, would be, that would be that would be what, what we're now looking at moving. Mm. Okay, two. What I think I need to do is just to go reverse a bit. Um, I didn't, my mistake, I did not ask for um, a, a somebody to move that we received uh, the chairperson's report at the start of this discussion. So can I just do a bit of housekeeping and ask for somebody to remove, i oh, sorry, to, uh, I'll, I'll move. Uh, ask somebody to move that I'll we have it. that we receive the chair report. Councillor Maynard, you and uh, and a seconder. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nathan. Uh, all those in favour of receiving the chairperson's report, all please right. say all aye. Right. Aye. 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 Thank you. All those against, please say no. Thank you. That motion has been passed. My apologies for skipping that. Okay, so now we have, um, so we'll make that alteration to that uh, that draft submission on pain estate. Um, what I just, uh, and while we're discussing that, does any, what I just, because this has been recorded uh, for the community and uh, people in the community may well be interested, I'd just like to read out some of uh, Karen's email, just so that uh, there is going to be some community awareness about what has been happening to Payne Estate yeah. and the work that has been taking place. Um, so, uh, so Karen's uh, email um, basically states that they will provide a complete update to the next Martinborough Community Board meeting, but for the purposes of uh, the annual plan submission, uh, they estimate that there is sixty thousand dollars outstanding for the following work to be completed uh, on Payne Estate. Uh, the, this details uh, cottage electrical rewire, uh, outside cladding replacement on the east side. Um, I don't know whether that's the cottage or the or the homestead. Um, homestead. Painting of the, of no. the homestead. It's the cottage, Aidan. Right. The cottage. Okay. Okay, um, painting the exterior of the cottage, uh, heating the cottage, electrical work in the homestead bathroom, painting internally of the homestead, uh, sash window replacement, uh, general clean up and touch up of work in the homestead and then work on the grounds. Um, Good. Uh, uh, so further down it states that uh, in addition there is painting to the interior of the cottage which is not yet uh, been quoted or estimates uh, provided for. Um, 
so that's base a, a basic update of uh, um, the following work that needs to be completed down there on the two buildings at Payne Estate. And uh, so it's good to see that progress has been made. Yeah, I think that's that's really good. Thank you, Aidan, because um, yeah, the, you can see that there's um, it's not just that they've been they've done the investigation; they had already started on the work. A lot of that had to stop. Um, like like the nation, um, <laughs> so so. But um, you know, it, it is it is all there and is is being you know they know because it's being done, so it's going to be done. So that's great. Thank you. Um, so that's pain estate. Um, has anyone got any other? Um, uh, I, I've got something I'd wish to add to um, our discussion about the annual plan. Does, before I start, does anyone else have any comments to make? No, I think this is a really good, uh, this is a really, um, but I think you guys have done a fantastic job working together to put this annual plan submission in place. And, um, you know, what's been previously discussed looks like the majority of it's been captured in here, but I'm, um, um, okay. Hold on. Additions. So after after our um our workshop meeting where we discussed our, our submissions, now now Mel has um has submitted our, our draft, but in light of that, there was a couple of other things that I did uh, that we talked about. And I have formulated some ideas and, and emailed uh, community board members. Um, so I would just like to go uh, through the, the, the points that I have raised. Um, so topic three, uh, land transport. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the issues that I had raised um, of in, where it says in particular rural road, road grading maintenance, I would like to be added uh, and metalling to be completed promptly. Um, uh, just to have that small bit added. Uh -huh. um, also under uh, land transport, I've also uh, felt that um, there's a comment in topic three that, and it states that there are additional costs this year to maintain our rural forestry blocks, including requirements to replace trees under the emissions trading scheme. Uh, Martin Borough Community Board. Uh, so this is the bits that that I have added um, and submitted to you all. Uh, Martin Borough Community Board feel that the funds for replacing trees under the emission trading scheme should have been set aside when the trees were felled by council or the organisations who benefited. Therefore, the burden of replacing those trees should not be on ratepayers in this term. As an alternative, Martin Borough Community Board would like funding to be sought from other alternatives, such as the one billion tree scheme to replant these areas. Uh, do you have any, anyone have comments on those, on that? No, I'm happy with that. Nathan? Michael? Um, yeah, no, a couple of good points, I think. Yep. Mm. Michael? Uh, yeah, no, good good points. I don't quite, I'm going to be ignorant here, I'm not quite, I don't quite get, quite get it. Um, now, how does it fall under the one billion tree oh. thing? I don't, yeah. So, so my thoughts, my, my thoughts for that, my, or I, I suppose the thoughts for that, Michael, was that I think there's a legislative requirement. Is is that correct, Harry? That, oh, sorry, uh, Alex. That that where trees have been felled, mm -hmm. and if if a landowner is receiving um, credits from the emission trading scheme, then once those trees are felled, they have to be replanted. Uh, otherwise, the credits have to be um, repaid. Uh, I think that, that so, it depends on the time of planting. I think it's 1992, uh, uh, post 1992. I think you'd need to seek clarification on that just to make sure that you're, um, you know, we're, you're the, the emissions trading scheme is a very complicated piece of legislation and I don't really know enough to, um, to comment. 
Uh, could okay. you just remind me, because I missed the first part of that, which, um, uh, what trees you were referring to again? Well, I, I, forestry. I'm not I, forestry <laughs> trees because um, <laughs> un, um, under the end, under the end, your plan made comment um, that uh, it's in the consultation document. There, sorry, yeah. just for clarification. It's actually stated in there. Okay, yeah, no, sorry, I thought you were talking about a specific um, area of trees that may have been... No, no, no I've, right, yeah. only, I've only gone from what's in the consultation document. Yeah. Where, where it says that there are additional costs this year to maintain our rural forestry blocks, including requirements to replace trees under the uh, ETS. So that's... Um, I, I suppose that's where I was feeling that uh, while there is a requirement, um, rather than putting the burden of... Uh, funding those trees onto ratepayers if other options or alternatives such as funding for the one billion tree scheme could be used to replant those areas. I, I, I think so, it, it's no harm at all to include that. Um, Ewan, you may be able to discuss this with, I think I, I would, um, the immediate one I think of uh, in looming our future is regarding Lake Ferry uh, with the removal of the trees there and what our requirements are uh, with regards to replanting. Yeah, we also have the um, the Martinborough Golf Course as well. well so, so, ever, so that both. Sorry, Mary Alex. Yeah, wherever possible, we would be looking at uh, uh, the an innovative way of replanting those trees. And if the billion tree fund is, is available, we would certainly be looking at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next point. The next point uh, of, of raised or drafted up is Martinborough Community Board support uh, council and allocating 50,000 for maintaining our urban trees and planting new ones. Uh, community board would like council to spend the money on buying new trees and utilizing volunteers and community groups to plant them rather than contractors so that our council gets greater value uh, for that 50,000. And, maxim and, and, and maximizes the dollar. Um, and in, in the past, uh, the concern has always been health and safety um, because of the all, all the rules and regulations that have been coming up in regards to health and safety um, and, and because a lot of the council land is on... Um, on like State Highway 53 and things like that. So, so the entrances to the, or, uh, you know, State Highway 1, entrances into towns and things. So um, it's, it's, it's a really good point. I just know that um, it has been raised before and that was that was the response back. It doesn't hurt mm. to raise it again. I think more and more communities wanting to get involved in these things raise it again. Our community, Sean at Martinborough, we had we had two people come to us at the last Martinborough Community Board meeting about trees, raise it. We know they've got the volunteers out there. <laughs> yes. And um, I can add that um, Bryce and, and the council have a new volunteers policy under health and safety and um, as long as we meet the requirements of those and have approval of the council, then I think it's a great idea to get the community involved in what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so I was just going to add to that as well. We can make the, the call on a case by case basis as well. Put it on, well, Aidan. Right. Add that bit in there. Yeah, so that's put it on. going under land transport, is it? So all these yes, things yes. that you have put in are all for land transport, yeah? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. And then the final thing that I, I had added under land transport was that. Martinborough, and, and, and this hasn't been raised in the consultation document, but it's something that I've certainly feel is, a, is relevant to Martinborough. And, and, and the thing, and, and what I have added here is that Martinborough Community Board would like to work with Council and the Martinborough Business Association to lobby New Zealand Land, New Zealand Transport Agency to progress replacement of the Waihinga Bridge on State 50. 53, which was built in 1912, as each time the Rumahanga River reaches 4.5 metres in level, the bridge is closed to traffic, which economically affects Martinborough businesses and the community. Thoughts, people?
Um, I Thumbs think up. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's pretty good. Um, we've seen what COVID's done to um, to Martinborough. Um, if you know, if say if that bridge, you know, how old's that bridge? Crikey, it's pretty old. If, if that fell over. 1912 it was built yeah you can pretty pretty much say goodbye to a few businesses around here mm. councillor pam um aiden through you could i ask um mayor alex and ewan um with the work that has been done on the bridge um is it still going to close at 4.5 meters or has the work strengthened it enough so that it uses Jenkins dip as its overflow now and so would you start going back to using the Bailey Bridge rather than the main bridge closing? I sort of had a feeling in the back of my mind that that was the outcome of the work they did um, three months ago. I, I must admit I don't know the detail on that one. Um, I don't know Alex if you know any more. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I think we might need to come back to you on that one. I have discussed this already with NZTA and Aidan exactly your point with regards to um, uh, the funding or where on the list a replacement bridge for State Highway 53 might sit. Uh, so NZTA is aware of that, uh, but it is not on any tranche of work that's within their uh, foreseeable future. Um, I and I may be wrong, so I'm loath to almost comment, but I'm pretty sure that Jenkins Dip is no longer operational and the strength of the bridge does not allow that to be used. I think there's still cracks in, in that. And they also feel that they won't be using the diversion or opening the gates uh, to, to need to use the Jenkins Dip bridge. So, but I think I, I'd like to come back to you and clarify that at the next meeting. Uh, but you can certainly put that through in a submission, you know, to see if see, uh, to to put it on the table. I suppose you could say on the table. Right. Yep, add it in on the table. It's got to start. It's it's got to start I, somewhere. I, I think, I think um, you've raised like some really good points that can definitely, to me, go on. You know, um, I believe they 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 come into um, under the land transport. All, all of those is that right? What about a tunnel yes, under the bridge? The top three of land transport. Tunnel. Sorry, Michael. A tunnel. A tunnel under the river. Under the river. <laughs> Why not? Are you yeah. going to be a miner, Michael? <laughs> no, bring it up. It's got to, we've got to start somewhere. <laughs> no, definitely. I think, I think um, that's really good. And I... Um, yeah, I, 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 and I think that the whole the whole lot has really really well thought out and and um, shows a lot of clarity from from this community board on what they're hoping to bring. So you know, to the community. So well done, guys. Great. Thanks for that, uh, Councillor Pip. Um, so I think um, now do I ask? or make a resolution to uh, accept or to approve the Martinborough Community Board submission with uh, those alterations that we have discussed tonight uh, for the annual plan of 2020-2021. Is that correct, Steph? Yes, I would include just subject to the changes you've discussed under the land transport section, as well as the removal of that sentence. So I've got that in there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thanks so much. Uh, do I have uh, somebody who would move uh, that uh, we approve the draft and the alterations? Councillor Maynard, thank you for moving that. Uh, would I have a seconder? Uh, Michael, thank you very much for seconding uh, that motion. Uh, I'll now put that to a vote. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Uh, all against, please say no. Uh, the motion is carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, is there any further business or are there any further matters to be raised?
No further matters to be raised. No further issues. Thank you very much for your participation, folks. Uh, as there is no further business, so I declare that this meeting is now closed. Thank you. Thank well you, guys. Done, Aiden. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.